What's happening folks? Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It is starting 11 prediction time once again for Sunday's game at home against Hearts. We come into this weekend sitting top of the table once again. Maximum points from the first three games and off the back of that impressive 5-0 win at Rugby Park last weekend. Hearts come into it. Two victories and one draw from their opening three league games. And they did lose in Switzerland the other night against FC Zurich. Be interesting to see what impact that has on their approach to this game. If they're going to maybe rest some players with an eye on that second leg at Tynecastle. Next Thursday, they did lose Craig Halkett to injury in the opening minutes of that game. So they might be thinking about managing their squad, even though this is a big league game for them. But it's not often that Hearts get the chance to make the Europa League group stages in the way that they have in this tie. So it's going to be interesting to see how they approach it. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by OneFootball. If you need a new football app on your phone, OneFootball is the place to go. You can select Celtic as your favourite team and that will give you all the latest Celtic news, transfer speculation, fixtures and even live match updates if for any reason you can't make or watch a game. You can also add widgets to your home screen to keep up to date with Celtic's next fixture, who it's against, what the kickoff time is, all that stuff. And you can track leagues from across the world, league tables, top goal scorers, you name it, you'll find it all there on the One Football app. You can download it by clicking the link in the description of this video. It's free, absolutely free, wherever you get your apps on your phone. And it's a great way to support Celtic Fans TV. So if you haven't downloaded it already, please click the link below and get involved. So, as I say, off the back of that 5-0 win against Kilmarnock, five different scorers last weekend. I spoke to Ange in the press conference yesterday. That was something I asked him about. Five different scorers, two substitutes scoring as well. How is that competition for places reflecting itself in, the, in the, the training level day to day? And he was keen to point out that having different threats all over the pitch is the team that he's always tried to have the kind of team that he wants this Celtic team to be and he feels we have been since he arrived. But the competition for places, or as he would call it, a strong squad because he's been very, very keen in recent weeks to sort of steer clear of this having a favoured 11 or, or having favoured players in certain positions, that the strong squad is driving up the levels in training um, and I think that's really, really important going forward. We have the luxury of one game per week for now. This is the second last week of it. We go to Tanadice next Sunday against Dundee United. Then we'll get Ross County midweek. Then it's the Derby. And then the midweek after that, the Champions League gets underway. So this will be a rare period of the season where we only have one game a week. And I think we're making the most of that just now. And hopefully we can really continue that on Sunday and get another impressive victory. So we'll get to the team then in goals. As always, it will be number one, Joe Hart. At right back, I think it will be Josip Juranovic. I think that the starting 11 we've seen in the last couple of weeks is close to what will be your strongest starting 11 going into these these Champions League games in a couple of weeks and the Derby. I don't think we're far away from seeing that that consistent strongest lineup. I know we'll start rotating when two and three games a week begins in, in, a, in a few weeks, but I think the, the, the starting 11 last week and the week before, which was unchanged, is very close to what our strongest starting 11 is at the minute. Carter Vickers will play at centre-half. The big decision that the manager has to make tomorrow at centre-half is whether he, he starts Carol Starfelt or continues with Moritz Jens. The thing with Jens is that he did come off injured last weekend. In the press conference yesterday, Ange didn't say that Jens was ruled out, but I don't know if he'll want to manage uh, that, that knock that he picked up at all. I think he'll go with Starfelt only because Jens came off injured last weekend and on the basis of last season, that is the strongest pairing. We've all been impressed by Jens in his, in his early games in his Celtic career. So it is going to be interesting to see how it develops, but I think that's the strongest partnership based on how they performed last season. And I think with everyone fit again, Starfield getting on the score sheet last week when he came on, do his confidence the world of the good, his first goal for the club after about 50 games. So I think that's the strongest pairing for now. I've been impressed by Jens. I think he can maybe displace Starfield. But I think when everyone's fit, the manager's going to go with Carter Vickers and Starfield. It'll be interesting to see how he does uh, line up tomorrow in that position. At left back, it'll be Greg Taylor. Almost the man of the moment up there with Jota since the start of the season. Excellent. Brilliant again last weekend. Playing that inverted role so well. He's 
he's taken to it brilliantly and he's really progressed since Sanj came in and I think last weekend was, was a prime example of it. Um, that first goal which broke the deadlock for us, it's always important to get the, the early goal away at those grounds on the plastic surface. You never want the game to become stuffy and locked at 0-0. And it was Greg Taylor that unlocked the door by going into that midfield position, receiving the ball. The Kilmarnock right back doesn't know whether to follow him or not. And then he's late in following him. Taylor gets turned, plays a lovely ball in between the centre half and the right back for Dyson Maida, who squares it for Kyogo for 1-0. But aside from that, the quality that he's shown Greg Taylor is tenaciousness, is determination, flying into tackles, riding tackles. He took a few strong ones last week as well, but he just bounces straight back onto his feet. For me, right now, he epitomises the, the never-stop philosophy of this Celtic team. He's been absolutely brilliant. So he'll be in at left-back. In midfield, it will be the captain, Callum McGregor. Rio Hatate is fit. I just confirmed that in the press conference yesterday. I think that means he's going to come back in and start alongside Matt O'Reilly. The thing with Hatati is that he was just rested last weekend as a precaution after picking up the knock. They didn't want to risk him on the plastic surface. They gave him an extra week, I think, back at full fitness. He'll start. Turnbull will drop out. Um, Turnbull, not his most effective game last weekend. But I think you could say that about most of the midfield, both McGregor and O'Reilly. But I think it is a reflection of how well the fullbacks and the wingers are playing. And we know that the fullbacks and the wingers are central to this Celtic team and the way it functions. So the midfield are obviously doing their jobs, but they're not the standouts in terms of creation and goal scoring. Um, that tends to be falling with the fullbacks and the wingers right now. But it's key, the movement of the midfielders is key. And I think that will be the, the three that starts in there tomorrow. Last weekend, I think I got 10 out of 11 because I went for a change in the front three. I thought Abada might get the nod ahead of Maeda. He didn't. Maeda was very, very good. It was his best performance of the season by a mile at Rugby Park. So I think the front three is going to stay the same tomorrow. That'll be Jota starting on the right-hand side, but plenty of interchanging with Maeda between right and left. Maeda on the left and Kyogo Furuhashi through the middle. Another unbelievable goal from Jota last weekend. That's two goals and three assists in the opening three games. And the start of the week is that since Jota arrived at Celtic, he's been involved in 25 goals in 32 Scottish Premiership games. That's more than any other player in the division. So if you want to debate who the best player in Scotland is, we can start by looking at that stat. Because for me, there's no doubt right now that Jota is the best player in the league. He's got so much talent, so much ability, and he's delivering on that. And I think that's ominous for the rest of the league, if he can keep that form up. But I'll wait for Kyogo to get on the score sheet again. Two goals so far this season. He'll be feeling good about things now. Um, always important for a striker to, to open up his goal scoring account. And it was brilliant to see him last weekend on the score sheet again. The thing with Kyogo is, he's not greatly involved in the game. i seen that. i seen that graphic. I can't remember what account put it up on Twitter during the week where... Um, he was contrasted with Haaland's performance for Man City against Bournemouth where he only played two passes and hit one shot I think he was brilliant but he doesn't need to be involved all the time that's not what his role is he played a beautiful through, through ball for Jota who should have finished it for 3-0 he got his goal he hit the crossbar in the second half with a header he probably didn't get the connection and the timing right on it but he is a constant threat and he doesn't need lots of touches to be effective. Um, I think Yakumakis is more involved when he comes on, but I don't think being more involved is necessarily a reflection of the fact that someone's a better player than somebody else. I think Kyogo is elusive. He likes to be on the periphery of the game and then pounce when the ball gets in the right positions. He's constantly making those clever runs, um, and I think he'll start again tomorrow so there you go that's 11 i think the man will go with tomorrow like this video comment with your own thoughts below don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i'll be back tomorrow with the full-time reaction and the post-match pint from malone's so make sure to join us for that and enjoy the game wherever you're watching it tomorrow cheers